We're going to go ahead and sing that one there. Um, wrap your song books. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Amen. <laughs> Amen. And uh, let's sing, Oh, Come All Ye Faithful. And uh, we'll sing here the uh, first, second, and last verse of this hymn song here. Um, all three verses of this song, Oh, Come All Ye Faithful. And uh, we'll sing this one here. Amen. So let's sing, okay? Amen. Grab your song book, page 56. And uh, let us sing it out for Jesus, okay? Oh, come, all ye faithful, joyful and triumphant. Oh, come ye, oh, come ye to Bethlehem. Come and behold him, born the king of angels. Oh, come, let us adore him. Oh, come, let us adore him. Oh, come, let us adore him, Christ the Lord. Sing choirs of angels, sing in exaltation. Oh, sing, all ye bright hosts of heaven above. Glory to God, all glory in the highest. Oh, come, let us adore him. Oh, come, let us adore him. Oh, come, let us adore him. Him cry, eyes the Lord. Yea, Lord, we greet thee. Born this happy morning, Jesus, to thee be all glory given. Word of the Father. Now in flesh appearing, oh come let us adore him, oh come let us adore him, oh come let us adore him, Christ the Lord. Amen. Wonderful singing and uh, remain standing if you will and uh, turn with me to page 49. <coughs> page 49 and we're seeing here uh heart the hell angels sing and we're seeing here also the first second and last of this song too as well page 49 heart the hell angels sing let's sing it out for jesus amen <clears throat> let us sing heart the hell angels sing glory to the newborn king peace on earth and mercy mild God and sinners reconciled. Joyful all ye nation rise. Join the triumph of the skies. With angelic hosts proclaim. Christ is born in Bethlehem. Hark the herald angels sing. Glory to the newborn king. Christ by high is heaven adorn, Christ the everlasting Lord. Late in time, behold him come, offspring of a virgin womb. Veil in flesh the Godhead see, hell incarnate deity. Please, as man with men to dwell, Jesus. Amen. Oh, well, hark the herald angels sing. Glory to the newborn king. Come, desire a nation. Come, fix in us the humble home. Wise the woman conquering sea. Bruised in us the serpent head. Adam likeness now has face. Stamp thy image in this place. Sack can Adam from above. Reinstate us in thy love. Hark the hair 
row angels sing, glory be to the newborn king. Amen. All right, wonderful. We welcome every one of you, every one of you being here. And we thank God so much for you. Brother Petrie, sing it. Go tell it on the mountain. You come on up, and I want him to sing it. Go tell it on the mountain. I thank God for Christmas time. It's been a wonderful time. It's a blessing to have family coming in. Of course, uh, you know some of our family are here. We love you. We pray for you and miss you. Thank you, Candace, for bringing your visitor. That's right. And thank you so much. We're glad you're here. You feel at home. And thank you so much for coming. Amen. Let's bow our heads in prayer, okay? And God has been so good to us. He's been so wonderful to us. And thank God for Christmas time. Loved ones are here. And thank God so much for that. And pray for their traveling. Pray for them. And, and ask God to help them. And I appreciate it so much. Okay? Father, we thank you for this wonderful time. Christmas time. And uh, thank you for our loved ones and being with us. And give them safety, we pray. And bless them in a special way. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you. Be seated. Think about this song. Let's go tell it in the moment. Thank you, brother. Go. Tell it on the mountain, yes. over the hills and everywhere. Go tell it on the mountain yes. that Jesus Christ is born. My shepherds kept their watching, the solid flies by night. Behold, throughout the heaven, that's our holy light. Go tell it on the mountain, over the hills and everywhere. Go tell it on the mountain, that Jesus Christ is born. Everybody ought to go and tell it on the mountain, over the hills and everywhere. Go tell it on the mountain that Jesus Christ is born. All about. Let's everybody stand. Go tell it on the mountain. Thank you so much, Brother Pentry. We thank God so much for you. We really do, you know. And uh, Brother Pentry is a blessing uh, to us. And, of course, we all know he has a disability. But one thing Brother Pentry doesn't have a disability with, that is serving Jesus. That is singing for Jesus. Thank you, Brother Pentry. And, and working and cleaning and helping and just a humble servant. And we'll say thank you during this Christmas time. It's been a blessing to hear you sing, all of our singers during this Christmas time, all these wonderful decorations and all that God has done. You can be seated. We're going to pass the bulletins out, okay? Get the bulletins in your hand in a moment. But Tim, there should be some right over there, some bulletins um, there. But Mark, you see the bulletins there, and, and you're going to get them in the hands of the people, okay? And, and get, get them a bulletin in their hand. And uh, I want to say one of the most important things on the bulletin there that you'll see is the welcome. Amen. Is the welcome. I, I want you I want you to know that I appreciate every one of you. Amen. 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 Being in your place, especially the Christmas weekend, you know. And we, it's, it's, it's on a Saturday. And we're, I'll tell you, used to working on bus route Saturday and serving so much going on around here and the property here and but of course, Christmas time and, and um, um, loved ones have come in town. You, you spend time with your loved ones uh, yesterday, and I wanted you to, and we did too. And, and it's wonderful to spend time with family. And and the ones that don't have any family, I want you to know Jesus will never leave you, nor forsake you. This will be the first Christmas. Some of them would be without a loved one. The loved one won't be here. Are you understanding? Are you understanding? And we got to encourage people. Amen? And don't take it for granted that we, our loved ones, were able to meet um, yesterday and meet today. Are you understanding? Won't you pray for Shabanda? Look like we got word that Dave has passed away. 
So that quick, the day after Christmas. So you pray for Kazan. Um, Shabanda, you uh, pray. Um, and uh, so pray for Shamir, okay? And, uh, and of course, you know, I'll talk about our church people that, that are here. I don't agree with several things that's been going on, but I do. I am sad and I'm not never rejoicing of the death. I'm, I, I would hope people would definitely get right before they depart and serve God. But it doesn't always happen that way and get things right. But now is not the time to dwell on that. Now is the time to pray for Shabanda. Pray for little Shamir. Yeah, I'm sorry. I, I hope Dave would get with it and serve God in church. I just wish he would have just got with it. I don't understand. You know, I wish I could just speak the word to people just go and serve God like they should. I wish I could. I would do it. I can't do it for you. It's a choice that you all must make. And I love you, dearly. And I grieve just like you do when um, people that we love pass. And I'm so glad we showed love today. I showed much. Um, I've reached out with them so many times. But right now, I want you to pray for her. And I want you to thank God for your loved ones. Thank God for my loved ones. Thank God for you. Appreciate each other while we got each other. Amen. But I just hope and pray we'll all be serving the Lord when we depart this life. Danny did such an outstanding job in teaching that. And it's so true. Those truths. So, I want to welcome, and thank you, you got the business cards already, and I, I hope that you get up, get, get, thank you so much. And make, we, we, we want these visitors always when they come. You're busy with us, raise your hand. You're busy with us, raise your hand, please. Raise, yeah, good. Let's, let's cheer them on. Thank you so much, Candace, for bringing visitors. And uh, thank you so much. Others bringing visitors, and that is such an encouragement. We pray for y'all when you're out of town. We love you dearly. So good to have you back. That's right, Liz and Dominga. And I pray for their safety as they travel. Pray for Danny and his wife and grandchildren. And pray for them all. Candace traveling. And, and uh, thank you so much. We, we pray for you, you know, as you travel. we got got to watch over you, you know. And um, uh, especially, you know, um, uh, and I, I just thank the Lord. Lord, and pray the angels continue watching over my daughter Candace when she's uh, pl flying a plane. <laughs> It's hard to imagine that. Pray for her sake. We love amen, you dearly. Amen. That's right. Amen. And um, got her friend. Amen. And he he wants to be a pilot and fly too. Pray for his safety and pray that God will watch over. May you draw close to the Lord. Amen. amen. Serve the Lord. Amen. Serve the Lord together. Put God first. Everything will fall in place. Okay? Amen. You ain't got nothing to worry about. Amen. All right? Amen. amen. Let the church say amen. amen. But we want you all to feel welcome, our regulars, and thank God. It's a busy time during the Christmas time of the year. But I want to say thank you for, you know, doing Jesus right, being in church. Amen. You know, it's, it's his birthday. Since, I mean, thank God for relatives and friends, but we wouldn't have it if it wasn't for the Lord. Right? And thank you, everyone that gives a special a birthday gift to Jesus. And we're going to put them on the table tonight. We'll have some more on the table over here. We're going to put some gifts. And then a special on the envelope. Look at the front of the pew. There's an envelope there front. Uh, we, some of us, have given a, a birthday gift to Jesus already. But we want to give more. Amen. We want to give another. Um, uh, the Nehemiah Project. Let me read the Nehemiah Project. Nehemiah. Of course, the improvements that we're getting around here. It's, it's wonderful what we got done. The more we're going to get done. Okay, the Nehemiah Project. But also, let me hear you say the general fund. I'm asking us to give some things in the general fund. That's, that's, the, that's at home. We've got to keep home healthy. Amen? And you know things are going up and fuel and electricity and everything's just going up inflation. But I thank God for God's people. And we're going to do it for Jesus. This is the house of the Lord. and The, the church is the body of Christ and he's the head. And, um, and I thank the Lord for Christmas gifts. But let's do Jesus right. Amen? And I encourage us to give a special Christmas gift. And you can write an envelope to the general fund. That'll help us. that help us so much. that help us with uh, utilities, insurances, fuel, and all that we do. And so much we want to get done. Isn't that right? And our Nehemiah project, there's definitely some band repairs we've got to get done. You know, and you, you know that. We want to get brand new windows in here and, and the parking lot paved. And there's so much we want to get done. And there's so much we got done. 
And I thank God for our visitors being here. Loved ones, isn't it wonderful to see when you come what God has done, what God is doing around here, how beautiful it's going to look. Amen. That pulpit should be coming in next, Amen. hopefully next week or a couple of weeks. Ain't that right? Amen. That's going to look beautiful in this auditorium. Amen. It's going to set the whole auditorium out. Amen. Wow. Amen. You know, Amen. I just think for God's people, God's people are the best. We wouldn't be able to get these things if it wasn't for the Lord. I want to say thank you. Amen? Thank you. But it does us good in our heart what we do for the Lord. Let's stand, please, okay? Um, right back there, if you got your, some people don't carry cash anymore, don't carry checks. There's a swiper right there. You can swipe your card, take it out, or your account through the card. Then they got the kiosk right here. You can do it that way right there through the kiosk. Um, let me hear you say Grace Bible Baptist Church. <laughs> there you go. You can just Google it, and then it'll pop up. A website will pop up. Yeah, go to the website. You can give on the website. Um, on your bulletin, you can put your phone, your camera over the QR code, and it'll take you right to the donate site. Amen. Right there. Put your phone over. Amen. Man, we don't give any excuse for people not to give. Amen. Amen. Used to people say, I left my money at home. Amen. <laughs> this helps us. Isn't that right? Amen. And so, um, this is so many ways we can give. Maybe you say gbbc.us. That'll take us right to our website. You can give right there. That's amazing how we can do it. Now, by the way, when you text 866-826-8954, it's in the bulletin, also on the website, make sure you know to text the word give. Let me just say give. give. Yeah, just text the word give. And you can give. God has blessed us so much. Some people, just they're just PayPal people. They will give no other way but PayPal. We got some people do that. There's a PayPal button on our website on the bottom. Yeah, isn't that great? Amen. Give and it shall be well. Thank God for every one of us that got a Christmas gift. God has reminded us of his wonderful grace and mercy, hasn't he? Amen. And, and the joy. You know, you know what amazes me? I thank God for the precious people that we give. It's just a joy that we give to each other. We look at each other. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. You know, we should be that same way with God. That's right. Amen. And say, you know, I won't have a tithe. I won't have all. I won't, I won't have this if it was for God. Mm -hmm. I hope we wake up every day and say, God, thank you for I'm not dying of COVID. Thank you, my loved ones, not dying of COVID. I feel like you, we shouldn't. I feel this people been better than me that have died of COVID. We shouldn't compare ourselves, but that's the way we do. God let us live. I don't know why. But I want to be here for my family. I want to be here for my children. I'll be here for my grandchildren. I'll be here for my wife. Amen. I hope we wake up every day and say, God, thank you for sparing us. Amen. Isn't that right? Amen. And thank God for sparing you. You know? But it don't have to be COVID. It could be anything. Mm -hmm. You know, I feel sorry for that truck driver. And you pray for him. He's just in his 20s. I know it's like driving a big old vehicle. Yes, but if I slammed in somebody and killed somebody, I would hate to spend the rest of my life in prison. I don't believe they should do that boy that way. You know, and, and, and the brakes fail. You know, his whole life is ruined. So why you mention that, preacher? Because in a moment, our life can be changed. You have some people that are dead, and then you have this young boy. I hope, you pray for him, hope the judge will get a hold of the judge's heart and people would rally together. And uh, it was a mistake. But Fred, I'll tell you what, we ain't got no problem like that 20-year-old, 20 20-something-year-old. 20 Isn't that right? God's been mighty good to us, ain't he, friend? All it takes is one mistake for us to do. Isn't that right? God help us. God help us. All right, so um, Brother Burley's coming, and um, he's going to challenge you and pray over the offering. There's an envelope right in front of you, in the back of you. Why don't you look at your bulletin? He'll be here in a moment sharing these um, importance of giving. But look at the uh, times of services tonight. Um, remember the choir practice, a Bible training at 630 and going through um, Isaiah, Brother Burley, wonderful job. Amen. Don't miss it. I was, it's a highlight on my Sunday. Amen. To hear him, the faithfulness. My brother Mike said hello, all from Connecticut. Amen. All from Connecticut. My brother Mike. And my kids know how my brother Mike is. And he knows how to, he knows how to encourage somebody. Amen. He talked about Brother Burley. He said, how is he doing? He said, how is he doing? How's he doing? He said, how's Burley? My, he said, he said uh, uh, I, Burl, yeah. He said, he said, I said, he said, we think of loyalty. He said, we think of loyalty. He said, how many years have you been there? 30 years, 30, 30 years, whatever. He said, he's been loyal. 
He said, I think about the man that's faithful, loyal. Amen. 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 He said, tell myself, Lord. Amen. 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 I said, that's right. God blessed us with Brother Burley through these years, all these years, and God has blessed them. God has opened doors, friend. I, I Listen, I'll tell you, I hope one day Brother Burley write a, write a book. Sister Trace, maybe you can encourage him. Amen. Just seeing that, I'd say you may be able to help him. Amen. He can write a book. How God blessed by giving. Oh, if people wouldn't realize the blessing of giving and serving God. Putting them first. I know there's no way you can describe it all. Amen. But challenge him. I know it gets tough, especially around Christmas time. But give. Don't let up. Don't leave Jesus on the back burner. Amen. 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 I'm going to share a verse with you. And uh, this is the Christmas. Yesterday was Christmas. And uh, um, Matthew 2, 11. And uh, thinking about the uh, wise men. And I, I love this here. What it says in Matthew 2, 11. And when they were come into the house, they saw the young child with Mary and his mother and fell down and worshiped him. And when they opened their treasures, I love that. They opened their treasures and they presented unto him gifts, gold, frankincense, and mirth. And uh, they, they wanted, they was, I love what it says, and they was wise. They was wise men. And they was wise. You read earlier in this chapter about these men. They were wise men. They were wise because they thought about the Lord Jesus Christ and uh, realized everything is, uh, is about him. We should worship him. And I love what it says here where it says they open their treasures. Amen. We need to open up our wallets and open up our pocketbooks. Amen. And uh, present something to Jesus because he is the reason for the season. Amen. And uh, if it wasn't for the Lord Jesus, we won't have Christmas. Amen. And so let's think about him this year and, 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 bring, and let's present a gift to Jesus and let him know how much we appreciate what he has done for us. And he gave us salvation. He's given eternal life. Uh, I had some relatives yesterday with the house. Just in my wife, she's she said, uh, uh, she wanted me to, she said, she pulled me to the side and said, I want you to present the gospel. I don't want nobody in here to end up dying and uh, going to hell. And, uh, and she, she said, I want you, you know, had some relatives that came up from Atlanta, kind of surprisingly, her my niece. But she, she said, I want you to give the plan and I want you to uh, give them a chance to pray. And so, and, uh, and that's, I, I love that, you know, because she, she realized that it's, it's about Jesus. It's not about uh, gifts and things like that. It's about him, and uh, she wants uh, her family to make sure they save. Amen. And so, thank God for that. Amen. And so, let's do something for Jesus this morning, and and to give some extra this morning if you can. Do something for the Lord. Uh, you wouldn't have had those gifts yesterday. It wasn't for Jesus. Put some extra in there for the Lord. God's been good to you. Amen. And the general fund, and then the Bill Meyer project. Excellent in there. Amen. For the Lord, and uh, we'll, and and ask, watch God bless you. Amen. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Father, we thank you, Jesus. We can give. Lord, you, you're so good, Father. We praise you, Lord Jesus. And thank you, Father. We just, um, this has been uh, quite a year. And I know we're going to have our New Year Eve service, Lord. And we've lost some people this year. And I think about my mom. It's going on to heaven. And think about some in our church. And now, Brother Dave, this morning. And so, Father, we just pray that you just give us grace through these difficult times that we're this year, but it's been a, a time that we've got a chance this time to spend with our families too as well. And thinking about you, Jesus, that you came to give us eternal life. Thank you for salvation. And so, Lord, I pray you bless us this morning. Help us to do something for you, Lord, to let you know that we're thankful and uh, that we're alive. Like Pastor just mentioned, we could we could be stricken with COVID. We could be on our deathbed. I prayed about, told my aunt yesterday, and I said, that it, we, we're just thankful to be alive. I told my aunt. And uh, she said, you're so right. We just got to be thankful that we're just to be alive. God's been good to us. So bless us, Lord, today. We love you. We thank you. We praise you, Lord. Provide every need for us. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. While we're giving, I want you to remember next week is our New Year's Eve service. And I want to encourage you to be in the house of God. And can I say this? And I will not betray people. And it's not, I don't want to ever kick people down or just to be talking about people. And I will not betray them. But if you knew what happened by people skipping New Year's Eve service, didn't open their year right. If you knew what happened to them, it's a tragedy. And I believe if they started their year off right in the house of God, and they were out doing things they shouldn't supposed to be doing, they wouldn't have gotten in trouble. So let's be where God wants us. Amen? Not that we're better than anybody, but we want to encourage them to be in the house of God. Let's start our year off in a great way, in a wonderful way. No better way to be in the house of God. It's wonderful preaching, teaching, and fellowship, and food, and encouragement, and singing, and 
Oh, there's no joy like the Christian hands from Jesus. Amen? And I want the best for y'all. I really do want the best for you. Let's everybody stand, if you will. Everybody standing and praying, asking God to help the grace angels as the Holy Spirit um, speaks as they sing. They're getting ready to sing the grace angels. And pray that the Holy Spirit will use the song, okay, to encourage you and pray for them. And pray that God will bless them and thank God they want to sing for the Lord. And by the way, our Christmas program is on the YouTube, it's on Facebook. You can get some chuckles, you can get some laughs, but you can also get some serious things that will help your life. And I want to encourage you to share the sermons on YouTube and on Facebook. Danny, you're up there. He's on Facebook and he's on the YouTube. What a great tool. What a great tool. I want you to pray for my daughter Joy. She's traveling. She's out of town. And pray for her safety. Lorraine, my son-in-law, and my grandchildren there. Okay. Renzo and Ava. Pray for their safety. Pray that they, Lord willing, they'll be coming back tonight. But pray for their safety. And you know, I told you I wake up each day and thank God so many people have died of this COVID thing. I thank God for our health. Also, I pray for our health. I pray for my children's health. Pray for my loved ones. Pray for each other. Don't take it for granted. Amen? And give God the praise for his goodness. Okay? Amen? God bless you. Let's bow our heads in prayer. If we'll, Shavonda, we are praying for uh, the situation there. I know it's not easy when you have a death of a loved one. And um, I want you to pray to let Shamir know it's not easy for her. Okay? Pray. Let her know we're praying. We've let Shamir know. We love you both. You know that. And we grieve with you. Okay? All right. You know, Pastor, and agree with everything that's going on. Ain't nothing hid. You know, you know all that. But we, we've loved you this whole time. We'll continue loving you. You know that. And all our loved ones know that here. We love every one of them. We love you. You love me. Amen. And we'll always love each other. Ain't that right? That's forever, isn't it? Ain't that right, friends? Am I telling the truth? Amen. A parent has unconditional love for the children. And a pastor has unconditional love for his people. That's the way it ought to be. That's the way we ought to be. You, you heard what Danny said in the message. Sometimes God chastens. He punishes. And I, I thank you for saying that publicly, Danny. That we always will love our children and still love them. Always will. And yes, we, when you were little children and we spanked y'all and corrected you. But thank you for knowing mom and dad loves you. And always will. And more than that, Danny, thank you for knowing the Father in heaven loves us. And how many times he heard me say it. You know, um, there's a God in heaven that will spank you. Now that my kids are grown older, I love you so much dearly. And I want to say to my older ones, you know, you, hey, hey, older ones, hey, listen, listen, older ones, listen, listen to me. You're getting older, listen to me. Look up here, look up here, I'm trying to help you. I'm trying to help you, okay? Are you listening? Hey, no, no, I'm trying to help you. You straighten up when we put that belt on your behind. And I hope you straighten up when God puts that belt on your behind. Amen. Hey, look up here, up here, up here. You straighten up. Amen. Look here. I'm confident as God puts that belt on your behind, you're going to straighten up on some things. Amen. Some things you know what you're supposed to be doing. Amen. Amen. Brother, brother, you feel the same way. Amen. My sister, Pastor. But it's out of love. Because guess what? God will turn around and bless you. And that's a good sign of a believer. Amen. That you got a father that loves you. Amen. So now that you're old, older now, daddy ain't going to come swinging the bell. But there's a father in heaven. He's going to give you something that's going to hurt harder than the belt. And he loves you. Always remember that. Amen. But also remember he rewards you. Amen. He rewards you. Amen. And that goes for all our people of God in this room. Amen. Amen, Pastor Barry. Amen. I love you, dear precious people. I really do. God bless you. And we appreciate you so much. Thank you so much. And we give God the glory and praise for what he's doing. Amen. Amen. Thank God, brother. It's Austin, right? Say your name. Austin. 
Say your name. Owens. 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 Oh, now also Owen. Look at Owen. Owen. Raise your hand, Owen. Amen. Also Owen. Thank the Lord. <laughs> Trust in Jesus. You know what? No Lord now. You know what? No Jesus to save you. What? Candace, encourage them all. Amen. And it's no tell what God will do. Amen. I called. I, I called Randy Raymond. Raymond, Randy. Raise your hand. Raise your hand. It, it, it's, it's Randy, not Raymond. Amen. He's been coming. God bless him. He's been coming. Isn't that wonderful? And I'll tell you, you pray for him. Thank God he wants to go on for the Lord. And we're praying for your family as well. Amen. Pray that God will continue blessing them. See this on the internet. And to God be the praise. God's been doing a work in your heart. Let's give God the thanks and praise for all these things. Let's pray. Let's praise God. Amen. Let's bow our heads in prayer. Let's pray. 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 Father, thank you so much. And we give you the praise and give you the glory for your goodness. And we just ask that you bless the grace angels. And Holy Spirit, use them. Um, use them as they sing and use these as they listen. In Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you. You can be seated. You can be seated. There is peace and contentment in the Father's house today. Lots of food on his table and no one is turned away. There is singing and laughter as the hours pass by. But a hush comes the singing as the Father sadly cries. My house is full, but my fields are empty. Who will go and work for me today? Since my children all want to stay around my table, but no one wants to work in my field. No one wants to work in my field. Push away from the table. Look out through the window pane. Just beyond the house of plenty lies a field of golden grain and is white unto harvest but the reapers where are they in the house can the children hear the father sally say my house is full but my fields are empty will go and work for me today. Since my children all want to stay around my table, but no one wants to work in my field. No one wants to work in my field. Since my children all want to stay around my table but no one wants to work in my field no one wants to work in my field amen thank you so much welcome god bless you let's everybody stand I forget young people, I forget to remind you, Henry, sometimes I forget you, come up in the second pew over here, girls back there, girls back there up here in the front, Brother Chris, if you can just start sitting right over here, right in front of me, right over here, right in front of me, you're my amen corner right here from now on, Brother, uh, Brother Chris, right over here, yeah, right over here, right over here, Chris, okay, all right, good, come on over, we've got the boys over here, teenage boys over here in this section, yeah, right over here, boys, yeah, 
Come move over here. Girls over here in second and third pew. Teenage girls, quick, come on down, teenage girls, second and third pew. Hey, boys, over here, over here, over here, over here, yeah, right over here, yeah, over here. here. Good, good. You, you're up front right here, Chris, right in front of me, good. You, you're helping me. You're my amen corner. Yeah. Now, that's, that's the assigned seats. I forget you sometimes. I forget you. Um, count second, one, two, count two pews, two or three. Yeah, count pew, count. Math, one plus one equals two. Amen. All right. Okay, let's see what we got here, okay? Good. This is wonderful. Choir, you're making your way up while I talk. You're, waking, you're making your way up while I talk. Choir is getting ready to sing. I appreciate you. Every one of you being here. When you come, I want you to get everything. When you come, you can go, uh, join us, Brother Grant. You come and join us, yeah. Come, come and join with us. Okay. All right. And um, if, if um, listen, while you're here, get everything you, you got, okay? I mean, get it all. All right? What I mean is, when the choir is singing, listen to the words. When you're talking, you're going to miss it. Okay? You're going to miss it. You don't want to miss it. Okay? All right? If you're talking. Okay? Great. And get all that you can get. The Holy Spirit speaking to you. Amen. That's right. And say amen once in a while. Don't be scared. Amen means I agree. Let me hear, let me hear church say amen. amen. Good. Great. Let's praise the Lord. Thank God for his goodness. Okay. Let's bow our heads in prayer. Okay. Father, we thank you so much for your goodness. Thank you for the choir. Thank you for every one of them. Holy Spirit, I pray that you pour. Father, I pray you pour your Holy Spirit upon them and help them sing and help each one to listen. May Christ be glorified. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Thank you for listening well. You can be seated. Thank you so much. Something 
about that name, Master, Savior, Jesus, like the fragrance after the rain, Jesus, 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 let all heaven and earth proclaim. Kings and kingdom will all pass away, but there's something about that name. His name is wonderful. His name is wonderful. His name is wonderful. Jesus, my Lord, He's the master of everything. Creator of everything, His name is wonderful, Jesus my Lord. He's the great shepherd, the rock of all ages, almighty God is He. We bow down and love him, worship and adore him. His name is wonderful, Jesus my Lord. Jesus, 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 there's just something about that name. Man's and kingdom will all pass away, but there's something about that name. Love listening to the choir. Let's everybody stand. Thank you, choir. Would you open your word of God to 2 Corinthians? Open the Bible to chapter 9. Let's stand, please, if we can, respecting the reading of God's word. Brother Brill is coming to read the scriptures. 2 Corinthians in chapter 9. 2 Corinthians in chapter 9. 2 Corinthians chapter 9. Second Corinthians chapter 9. Verse 7. Brother Burley is going to read verse 7. He's going to read verse 7. Lifting up his voice. Verse 7. And you're going to read every other verse with him down through um, down through verse 15. Oh, this is one last time, Sister Nathalie, hopefully you can sing it and pray for her. Oh, holy night. You did such a wonderful job Sunday. Amen. Sunday night, hopefully you can, you can do it again. I hope you, you can got the words to it. I hope. You, 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 can you get the words to it? We can help you if you need, if you need some help. We'll motivate you, okay? And, uh, but she did a wonderful job singing that song, Oh, Holy Night. During Christmas time, it's one of my best songs. I love yes, to hear. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. We'll get the decorations down soon. Before you know it, New Year's will be here. And it'll be another year. and All these decorations will be down. And all these Christmas decorations. Well, we'll enjoy these last moments together. And it comes and goes so fast. Isn't that right? Yes, sir. It comes and goes so fast. Yes, Christmas. Yes, sir. Wow. 
it's the happiest time of the year. It's the best time of the year. I love it. It's been a wonderful time with our loved ones. I love our loved ones. And I'm sure you love friends and relatives. and You have a great time. You have a great time. But the best thing I love about Christmas is about with Jesus. Just, I want to love him more. I want to do more next year than I've ever done for the Lord. And you pray for me and I'll pray for you. Amen? Amen. Amen. Read the Bible through. Amen. Let me hear you say read the Bible through. Read, the Bible. read it through. Read it through. Read it through. Read it through. Lord willing, in January I strive to meditate on it, listen to it, read it, you know, the whole month of January. And uh, I'm not saying you've got to do that, but at least through the whole year, read the whole Bible. Amen. It's amazing. It's a puzzle. Amen. You put the pieces together. And you look at the puzzle and say, wow, look at that puzzle. Amen. Amen. That's the way it is in life. Yes, sir. And some of you are missing a lot because you're missing the Bible. But make sure you mind this year coming up, you're going to do it. Amen. 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 And you're going to serve the Lord. Amen. Isn't that right? Amen. All right. So, um, 2 Corinthians chapter 9, Brother Burley is reading verse 7. You're going to read every other verse with them, down to verse 15. Okay, again, uh, we'll read here 2 Corinthians and chapter 9, and uh, we'll read verses 7 through uh, 15, and we'll read these verses responsibly, and I'll read the first verse, and you read the second verse, and so on, all the way down to verse 15. And God is able to make all grace abound towards you, that ye always, having all sufficiency in all things, may abound to every good work. As it is written, he has dispersed abroad. He has given to the poor. His righteousness remain forever. Now he that ministered seed to the sower, both minister bread for your food, and multiply your seed sown, and increase the fruits of your righteousness. Being enriched in everything to all bountifulness, which calls through us thanksgiving to God. For the administration of this service not only supplies the want of the saints, but is abundant also by many thanksgivings unto God. While by the experiment of this ministration, they glorify God for your professed uh, subjection unto the gospel of Christ and for your liberal distribution unto them and unto all men. And by their prayers for you, which long after you, you, for the exceeding grace of God in you. Thanks be unto God for his unspeakable gift. Amen. Let's go to the Lord in prayer at this time. Every head bow, nice close. Put the Lord in prayer. Father, we thank you, Lord Jesus, for the word of God. Thank you, Lord, for blessing us <clears throat> to be in the house of God this morning once again. Lord, I pray you bless the preaching, fill pastor with the spirit of God. Give him power and give him liberty as he brings forth the word of God. May souls be saved and lives be changed. Christian be encouraged in the Lord. And we ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 
Church, say amen. amen. All right, Second Corinthians, if you will, in chapter nine. Thank you so much for ministering to us, sister. We appreciate you so much, and sister Nathalie went through a lot of trials this year, and uh, it's a joy to see God keep you going on, your family, brother Grant. But it's a wonderful Christian testimony. I, you, in your trials and your troubles, you just keep on singing, keep on ministering. So we want to say thank you. God bless you and continue praying for Sister Nathalie and her family. 2 Corinthians chapter 9. You can just turn this cordless mic up down just a, just a tab. I've got a little ring in it. Just a tab, okay? 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 15. Good. Thank you so much right there. And um, uh, thanks be unto God for his, let me hear you say it, unspeakable gift. Let me hear you say unspeakable gift. Let me hear you say unspeakable gift. Thanks be unto God for his unspeakable gift. Let's pray. We're talking about God's unspeakable gift. Thank God for his unspeakable gift. Let's bow our heads in prayer. God's unspeakable gift. Father, help the people, precious ones, bless them. May it transform our lives, this truth, in Jesus' name. Help me, Holy Spirit, I pray. Christ, get the glory, pray. Amen. Amen. So you can title it, God's Unspeakable Gift. Christmas time, wonderful time of the year, time with family and friends, and, and I'm sure if I would ask you this morning, what did you get as a gift? Some of you might got clothes, and some of you might got games, and some of you got, you can go down and on and on and on, and some of you might got some candy or some cake or whatever, um, you got some jewelry, and, uh, and if I would ask you to step up to the plate and come on by this morning and share with me what somebody gave you, might have been some ties, might have some socks or 
Whatever it is, it's some expression of love and some expression of thinking about you. Isn't that right? A reminder of God's grace and God's mercy. Amen. Amen. In the book of Esther, they celebrated, clapped their hands. Hallelujah. Praise God. They didn't get destroyed. Oh, wicked Haman wanted to destroy. Uh, um, with that wicked Haman oh that wicked guy he wanted to destroy all of God's people I mean kill them children teenagers adults. I mean wipe them out hurt them uh, uh, but thank God praise God God intervened raised up Esther somebody say amen and what did they do they celebrated they sang gifts to one another they sang gifts to family they sent gifts to friends and they, it's a time of rejoicing and praising God. Some of them to speak up what their family um, did, what their friends did. And they had food. They had meats. <laughs> everybody in this room that's saved, everybody in this room that's saved, including the preacher, you, have received the unspeakable gift. How do you describe it? Painters tried, they can't fully do it. How do you describe it? Great poets from the centuries have tried, can't fully explain it. Isn't that right? How many times you were a Sunday school teacher trying to get up and they still can't explain it? Totally too wonderful, too big, too great, too mighty, too valuable. See, my preacher, I didn't get no gift during this Christmas time. Oh, don't you tell me you didn't get no gift during this Christmas time. My Bible tells me in John chapter 3, verse 16, I'm going to try to explain to you, but I can't really explain it to you. It's an unspeakable gift for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. That's what you got, Brother Owen. That's what you got, Brother Owen. When you bowed your head, you asked Jesus to save you. I want you to know it's it's an unspeakable gift. It's eternal life. Somebody say amen. I got that gift when I was 18 years old. I received that gift when I got saved as a young man. And I will never forget the day that I called on Jesus, that he saved my soul, that heaven's my home. Somebody say amen. I've been now for 40 years trying to explain it to people, going up and down the streets of this country, preaching in the states and the cities and, and doing my best. But I can't fully explain it. Can't fully explain it, Brad. Can't fully explain it. It's an unspeakable gift. Thanks be unto God for his unspeakable gift. It's only a reasonable thing to give him a gift. It's only a reasonable thing to give him a gift. Oh, in 2 Corinthians chapter 8, look what it says here in verse 2. How that in a great trial of affliction, look at verse 2. Look at 2 Corinthians chapter 8 and verse 2. How that in a great trial of affliction, the abundance of their, uh, in the, in the abundance, uh, in the abundance of their joy and their deep poverty abounded unto the what? Unto the riches of their what? Of, of their liberality. For to their power, I bear record, yea, and beyond their power, they were willing of themselves. Praying us with much entreaty that we would receive the gift. Let me hear you say gift. Yeah. Gift. And take upon us the fellowship of the ministering to the saints. They begged Paul. They begged the preacher. Please take this gift. But Paul said, you're poor. Paul said, you ain't got hardly nothing. They said, but Paul, if we don't give, you're going to rob us of the blessing of God. Because give and it shall be given. And, and Paul, God, oh, oh, this is wonderful. This is this is so wonderful. In Second Corinthians, oh, there's so much here. And in, um, in chapter um, uh, eight, in verse eight, look what he said here. I speak that by commandment. You can turn this um, down just a tab. This this cordless mic. I don't want to see blood coming out of your ears. Somebody say amen there. Okay, all right. Okay, I want to keep them awake, but I want no blood coming out. Okay, no, just a tab up. Turn turn me a tab just a little bit up. There. Okay, good. That's good. Great, right there. Would you look at Second Corinthians chapter eight? And would you look at here, if you will, um, and uh, in verse um, uh, eight and nine? I speak not by commandment, by occasion of the forwardness of others. And to prove the sincerity of your love. To prove the sincerity of your love. For ye know the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. That though he was rich, 
Yet for your sakes he became what? Poor. That ye through his poverty might be rich. Like, like I said, brother, brother Chris, thank God for you. Thank God for brother Chris. He may have a disability, but he has enough, he, he, has, he knows enough to say amen. amen. He knows enough to say hallelujah. Amen. Brother Chris, I told you, faith comes by hearing and hearing the word of God. Amen. And all right, don't worry about it. He sometimes he'll walk up to you and he got a little disability here. He said, show me what book he's showing. Show me what scripture. He wants to see it. Okay, okay. He can't find it. Okay. He may not be able to read or write. But thank God you encourage Chris on. He can hear. And faith comes by hearing. And hearing the word of God. And he's a, he's a, just a, a submissive, humble servant. He does. Saying amen, hallelujah. Amen. And I tell him, I just, thank God for him. He go over here and ask you where, where to find it. While he's look at While he's coming after you. All y'all looking and get, get distracted. <laughs> we love you. He's here. Cheer him on. Amen, amen Brother Chris. Let me say amen. amen. Thank God for Brother Chris. But he's out soul winning. He's out serving God. While you are at home, he's sometimes helping me out, cleaning up the church while you're left, and straightening it up. So some, will somebody say amen? Thank God for you, Brother Chris. Well, thank God for his unspeakable gift that God gave you. Thank God one thing you ain't got a disability in. You know you got that unspeakable gift. You know you got the gift of eternal life. Somebody say amen. 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 I bless you, Brother Chris. Second Corinthians chapter 8, verse 8, verse 9. I want you to see that he said, prove the sincerity of, of the love that you have, for you know the grace. In other words, you know about this unspeakable gift, verse 9. You know. You know that he was rich. You know he became poor. You know that he, he came and born in a poor family. You know about Mary. Mary. You know about Joseph. You know about how they went to the temple. They didn't even have an expensive, expensive animal. And they had to have some pigeons, some dove, some little pigeons, some birds. And they didn't have the lambs. And they didn't have the goats. They didn't have the rams. They didn't have the steak. They didn't have the beef. I wish somebody would say amen. I wish somebody would say amen. Preacher, I agree. I agree. He was poor. He was born in a poor family. Mary was poor. Joseph was poor. But he left heaven. He left the streets of gold. He mentioned he left the mansion bright. He should have got pop. He should have got prayed. He should have got more glory than Herod. And Herod was struck by worms by the angels because he tried to receive all the glory and all the majesty. But that glory belongs to the King of Kings and the Lord of glory. I want you to know he deserves more parade. And somebody help me out. I'm trying to help you. There, there wasn't all that, man. No mansion but a manger. No mansion but a manger. He that owns the mansions and the cattle on a thousand hills. He that owns the, owns the fishes and the seas. He that owns the gold. He that owns the silver. He said it's mine. He, he's got the whole world in his hands. He 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 got a you and me brother in his hands. Come on, he got of you and me. How was some of you loosen up? In his hands, he got the you and me, brother. In his hands, he got the whole world in his hands. Amen. It's all in his hands. Amen. How can a God like that wrap himself up as a baby? As a baby! How can God control the universe when it becomes a baby? Hey, when you become God, bud, you can do anything. You can do anything you want to. So because God's an unspeakable gift. Let's give God our reasonable gift. I want you to go to Romans chapter 12, please. I want you to go to Romans chapter 12, please. Verse 1, I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. Be not conformed to this world, but be transformed 
by the renewing of your mind that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Like I said, Brother Chris, you're listening well, aren't you? You're listening, my brother. Thank you. You're listening. Amen. God will help me with that. I told you after the service, we'll go over it. You lack me many questions you can. I'll show you as many verses you want me to show, show you, son. Amen, Amen my brother. Amen. God bless you. Thank God you want to. No, I'm worried about Brother Chris. The ones that ain't got no disability, they can read it, but they sit there. They don't turn to it, or they don't, they, they don't help a friend, or they don't help a relative, and they can pick that Bible up. Somebody help me out. I'm worried about the ones that can read about this unspeakable gift and, and God can explain to them and open their eyes about it and have no desire to even open the word of God. That's the ones I'm concerned about. Romans chapter 12 and verse 2 and be not conformed to this world but be transformed by the renewing of your mind that you may prove what is the good acceptable uh, perfect will of God I beseech you I beg you by the mercies of God because of his unspeakable gift in other words verse 1 that ye present your body what's your present what's the present under the tree what's the present what's the present on top of the tree what's the present what's the present you got in the mail from UPS from FedEx what, what, what have you presented what have you given I beg you to because of the mercies of God because of his unspeakable gift give God your hands give God your feet give God your eyes give God your ears give him a holy life give him a clean life don't give him a life filled with stinking wickedness give him don't give him the crumbs give him your time give him your time give him your talents give, give, come on come back at Sunday night when you don't feel like it come back on Wednesday evening when you don't feel like it work on a bus route go so what and Serve God. Serve God. Pray and read your Bible and serve God. You know, because of the unspeakable gift. Because of the unspeakable gift. Because it's so wonderful. How do you describe heaven? How do you, how do you describe heaven? Second Corinthians chapter 12. Read it. Meditate on it. How do you describe it? Paul was caught, caught up in the third heavens. There was words he couldn't speak. He couldn't speak about. He couldn't speak about it. How do you describe streets of gold, mansions bright, gates of pearl? How do you describe such a place? No sickness, no death, no sorrow. How do you describe such a place? Ladies and gentlemen, to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. You say, preacher, you going to heaven? Sure, sure. You say, preacher, what did you do to work to earn heaven? Our old friend, heaven is not something you can earn. Heaven is something that God gives you by his grace, by his mercies. I wish somebody is saved, man. This morning, I wish somebody would understand. Please, Holy Spirit, help them to understand how good you are. You wouldn't live the way you live, some of you. You wouldn't do what you've done. You won't break God's heart. You, somebody help me out. If you just think about where you came from, somebody say amen. Think about where the gift came from. Think about who he is. Think about who we are. At Romans chapter 5 verse 8, it says, While we were sinners, Christ died for us. Paul was a wicked man. He killed Christians. Paul was a wicked man. He lived in his wicked sin, but he got saved. He got changed. Yes, he did. He went to jail. He kept on going. He was beaten with rods. Why? Because of the unspeakable gift. The reason why he suffered and kept on going, because of the unspeakable gift. How can he keep going? People broke his heart, but he kept on going. He had health problems, but he kept on going. When people were disloyal, he kept on going. I wish somebody would say, man, because who he is, because where it came from. By the way, don't, 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 this shouldn't be weird. You've been to a ball game? He ought to be looking at you weird. He ought to be looking at you saying, what's wrong with you? He said, he's doing that because he got a disability. I wish you'd get one. Amen. Maybe you'll shout. Amen. And it's sad that sometimes God's got to take away something good for you to get excited. Come on, man. Come on. Yes, sir. If they shout at a ball game, you can shout at church. Amen. They shout at a nightclub and get sick and trampled and killed, you can shout at church. Amen. All God's people said. Amen. 
all God's people said, I'm going to ask God's people, well, you men, I'm not going to do it to you ladies, but I'm going to ask you men to stand up right now, please, and say hallelujah. I'm going to ask you men, don't be a bunch of wimps, don't be a bunch of sissies, don't be a, uh, don't, don't look like a bunch of queers, don't look like a bunch of sodomites. I'm asking you to get some men in you to say hallelujah, to say amen. I'm asking you to lead the way. Don't you be some stinking transgender. Don't you be like some stinking boy that want to be a girl and be a girl while you're swimming and be a stinking punk. Don't you be that way, bud. I don't give a flip if the White House flips out. I don't care if America flips out. God's people ought to do what God wants you to do. Thank God for his unspeakable gift. Burn out, amen, guys. Now, come on, girls, you're a cheerleader. I'm not asking you to stand. I'm asking you to clap your hands and be a cheerleader for Jesus and cheer Jesus on before his unspeakable gift. And let me hear you say amen, girls. Let me hear you say amen, boys. Say it together. And all God's people say it. Thank you. You can sit down. God bless you. Most exciting place ought to be the house of God. Thank God for his unspeakable gift. That'll help you to stay clean. That'll help you to stay pure. Me and my wife made up our mind. You know what we said? We want to thank God for our unspeakable gift. God's been good to us. God's been good to us. He saved me. He changed me. A young people's not easy. A day like, Don't talk. You, if you know about God's unspeakable gift, you won't be talking during the sermon. That's your problem. The reason why you're going to talk and fidget around so much, you're not thinking about this unspeakable gift. But if you think about it, you, you pay attention to say amen. Yeah, you say hallelujah. You won't be playing with your phone. The problem is you're not thinking about that. You can be in hell, son, if it wasn't for Jesus. You understand me? You can be burning in hell. Eternity, how do you explain living forever? Would it help you to stay clean and pure? Would it help you to get God's best? If you just think about what he done for you and how much he loves you. And if you can just think how good God's been to you to be raised in a Christian home, to go to a Christian school, to go to a Christian, hey, if you go to a Christian Bible college. If you think about how good God's been to you, what he saved you from so much heartache, it'll help you. To get God's best and do God right. Amen? If you just think how wonderful he's been to you. You know, by the grace and mercy of God, Paul said, by the grace of God, I am what I am. And it won't be hard. And just think about how God has blessed us so much. There's people that's dying to try to get in this country. Think about them trying to get in this country. Think about them. Think about it. And you're an American citizen. Think about how good God's been to you. Don't take it for granted. Danny brought it out right. He went to the mission field there and visited there. And Peru was it, Danny? And think about all the poverty, things that we take for granted, our electricity, our homes, and all the things we got here, and, the, and, the, and how cold it was. And the, we take for granted our heat and, and so much. And you, you, you come back to America and thank God for how good he's been to us. God's been blessed, blessed us with children. I have 12 children, six boys, six girls. I always talk about them because it's an unspeakable gift. I can't fully comprehend how good God's been to me and my wife. Nine grandkids. Nine. God's grace. The fruit of the womb is his reward. Blessed are those that have their quiver full. I love every one of them. Every one of them are creation of God. Every one of them. I love them dearly, young people. You have no idea. I wake up, I think about you. I go to bed, I think about you. It's just, there's no day you're not on my mind. And I beg God to be merciful and graceful to you. And brother, bro, you're the same. My sister, Betty, who loves you. Burly children, you love them. And they have no idea how good God's been. These are our children. And then you precious people in this church, I love you. I dearly, dear, I believe we got some of the greatest people in the world in our church. I get to pastor you precious people. Amen. It, it's indescribable how God's blessed your pastor. He's been so good to me. And I want you to count your blessings, see how good God's been to you. And serve him and love him. Amen. Amen? And that's going to motivate you to live right and do right. And the Holy Spirit speaks to us. 
That helped me through the, through, through the year. And that helped, hey, 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 Barney kids, this helps me to not want to break your heart and live selfishly in sin and wickedness. I don't want to break your heart. Because God's been too good to me. The gift that God's given me to you. And there's a lot of preachers that went into wicked sin, did wicked things, that asked the church to forgive them, had asked their family, said, I've done these wicked things. Sorry. Right? But what motivates me not to do it, I think about the gift that my wife, you've been faithful to your wife. You young people, look at these marriages. Look at how God has blessed us. And we just want you to get all the blessings that God has for you. Amen? And I promise you, if you think about how good God is, that'll make the difference between you and others that don't serve God. Others that rob God. I love you. But we got some that rob God in tithes and offerings. But I promise you, they'll give if they just think about how good God's been. By the way, thank God for you loved ones. Sometimes you come and you send... You send, you send tithes and offerings in. I want to say thank God bless you. But you want to know when they do that, know what they're saying? They're thanking God for how good he's been to them. God bless you. And I know sometimes it gets, it's tough. It's, it's struggling. Hey, hey! It's not that the pastor wants your money and your funds. God can move you out of the way and get somebody else. But I'll tell you what, it makes me happy that you learn giving it shall be given. To you. you learn that God loves a cheerful giver. And you learn that you may go through troubles and problems, but God can work it out. Let's bow heads in prayer. Thank God for his unspeakable gift. Isn't that right? Isn't that right? Young people, love the Lord, okay? Love him, amen? Serve him. Give him your life. Give him your body. Give him your hands. Give him your life. Isn't that right? Okay. How many of you know for sure when you die, you're going to heaven? Would you raise your hand? You're 100% sure. Heaven bound. How many of you know for sure? No doubt. Heaven's your home. Would you raise it high? Thank you. You can, put it, you can put it down. How many would say, how many would say, Pastor, I don't know. I don't know I'm saved. I don't, I don't know. I need, I need to be saved this morning. Anybody like that? You don't know you're saved. You don't know you're going to heaven. We don't want you to go to hell and burn. Anybody like that? Okay, I'll take it. You're all saved. You're all children of God. You're all children of God. Amen. Well, after you get saved, you need to get baptized. They got baptized the same day. Some of you are running slow. You're running behind. After you get saved, you ought to get baptized as soon as you can. Amen. Amen. Who needs to be baptized this morning? Raise your hand. Raise it. Say, I need to be baptized. Raise it. Raise it high. After you get saved, you ought to get baptized. You need to join the church. After you, after you get baptized, you ought to join the church. Who needs to join? Who needs to join the church? Raise it. Raise it high. Raise it high. Raise it high. Who, who would say, preacher, that's me, that's me. It's an unspeakable gift, but I, I ought to give God the reasonable gift. By the mercies of God, I beg you, Paul said, by the mercies of God. It's because of the Lord's mercies we're not consumed with this COVID. It's because of the Lord's mercies we're not going to hell. We don't deserve the good things that God's given us. God's blessed us with so many things, so many unspeakable gifts. Isn't that right? You say, that's me, preacher. That's me, pastor. I'm a child of God. I realize how good God's been to me. But there's some things I need to give to God. I can't work my way to heaven, but I can show him my gratitude. Sometimes I do get selfish. Sometimes we do get selfish. But